As beautiful as they are, they can be a nightmare for many artists. From bad reference pictures to subtle anatomy features which made this breed stand out from all the rest, many artists struggle and often give up or don't even try to create work with this stunning breed. In this episode, I'm going to show you how to troubleshoot your toolbox, refine that gold mine of yours, and be able to create the Frisian painting you've always wanted to make. Alright guys, let's start by figuring out what kind of artwork you want to make. Now, is this horse just an aspect of your scene, or is it all about the horse? Is it just a portrait, or do you want everyone to instantly know it's a Frisian? Do you want to include a story in your scene, or is the horse enough? What is the tone that you want your painting to have? Do you want a low-key tone where you're using a dark or a black background? In this case, lighting is going to be very important. Use muted tones and neutral colors. Do you want a dark, gothic, or horror theme? Use dark elements and an overall dark feel to your composition, but use lots of contrast in that background. Keep in mind that lots of contrast is going to have your eye all over the board and actually dials up your anxiety a little. How about a mystery or period theme? Maybe a romantic theme? Mystery? Use that mane to obstruct the face a little bit more. Stick to using the surrounding colors like crimson, hunter green, thylacane blue, and yellow oxide or yellow ochre. Think Ladyhawk, Mask of Zorro. These ideas can also be applied to give your horse a more formal appearance. Alright, in order to help you kind of narrow down the scope when we're talking about Frisian horses, let's talk about the body type of a Baroque horse. Today's equitation demonstration will be demonstrated by the Andalusian. This breed was chosen over the Frisian as it comes in a wider variety of colors and does not feature the lower leg feathers, allowing for artists and researchers to more easily see the physical features and the anatomical movement of the Baroque body type. Now, if you're thinking why, remember Zorro's horse is actually a black Andalusian. However, because Antonio Banderas is not a tall man, it would have had great difficulty getting on such a breed, as well as he would have looked small by comparison, Toronado is played by a Frisian named Arian. However, many of the disciplines demonstrated here show the wonderful lines and shapes made by the Baroque type, which a Frisian breed is part of. Remember that not every Baroque is a Frisian, but every Frisian horse is a Baroque. The lavish and rich Baroque period is associated with the 16th to early 18th century when European art and culture was inspired by the court of Louis XIV of France. It was a time when art and music became ornate and grand, when science began to probe the mysteries of the universe, and when people first questioned the religious status quo. Welcome to one of the iconic aspects of what is now considered steampunk. Riding was elevated to an art form during this period as well, and breeds of horses that rose in popularity during this era continued to awe riders and spectators with their beauty, movement, and strength. Baroque breeds descend from horses of the Middle Ages, which include the Iberian horse breeds, such as the Lusitano, Andalusian, and Pure Rasta Española, or Pre-Andalusian, the Hasburg Lipizzan, and the Dutch Frisian. Many of the disciplines demonstrated here include the iconic Airs Above the Ground and the lesser known Dampaquera. Originate closely to the Baroque horse's original needs for driving cattle and use in war. The Dampaquera, which requires a lot of agility, speed, and endurance, was used by cattle herders called falleros. The heirs above the ground, which classically associated with the Lipizzan breed, have their origin in the wartime Spain, where the horse's movements were used to both protect the rider and deter or subdue surrounding ground forces. These movements, which are a series of maneuvers and jumps, are now associated with high classical dressage, were originally designed as equine military training to help 
develop strength, agility, balance, concentration, and focus on the rider's demands. Over time, they have been transformed into a living art form of ballet, grace, and precision. These movements include, but are not limited to, the Spanish walk, the passade, lavade, corbette, and the capriole. More commonly, you may recognize the passage as part of the disciplines demonstrated in English equitation. In dressage, horses use high-stepping gates. Judges want to see high energy and animated movements, all performed smoothly. As you're watching these horses, take note of the rhythm, suppleness, and the low contact from the riders, and the collection of the horses as they move through the ring. The horses should move forward from their hindquarters, having uniform bend through circles and turns, move forward straight unless performing lateral exercises. The horses must be balanced through transition and show clear collection from one movement to another. Some of these disciplines, which are often featured in English equitation classes and Olympic games, include the piaf, passage, half and full pass, extended canter, and the very difficult canter pirouette. On the subject of anatomy and conformation, here we will be looking at the horse's bone structure, musculature, and its body proportions in relation to each other. A horse's conformation is usually judged by what its intended use may be. Thus, form to function is one of the first sets of traits considered when judging conformation. With the Baroque breeds, we need to focus on very specific parts of the horse to carry that Baroque appearance, particularly in the slope of the shoulder, the height of the withers, the lines of the neck, and the sloped croup which brings the hindquarters underneath the body. The body has a strong, solid, muscular skeletal frame designed to provide them with great deal of power, a shorter back, sloping croup, which allows for ease of engagement with collected work. When drawing, it's important to attempt to visualize and evaluate the skeleton of the horse underneath the muscle and other tissues. The slope of the shoulder determines the top line ratios of the neck and body, and it is critical in determining the balance of your horse. The slope of the shoulder is measured from the top of the withers to the point in the shoulder. When you move these two points, the angle changes drastically. When the angle of the shoulder is increased or decreased, it affects the neck and the body proportions of your horse. Not only does the top to bottom line ratio change the neck, but also the length of the back and the underline also changes. It is ideal to have a short top line and a long underline. As the shoulder becomes straighter, the withers move forward, which results in a longer back from withers to coupling. Frisian and other Baroque breeds have an oblique angle of shoulder with the withers set well behind the elbow vertically, thus a slope shoulder and higher withers. Now let's all remember that the chest is the base of the neck. In this case, the chest of the horse is convex or arched with proportional development of all muscles. The horse's chest should be well-defined, but not blend into the neck. When viewing the chest from the front, the chest should be wider at the bottom than at the top. The shoulder blades should be much closer together at their tops, toward their withers, than the points of the shoulder where their front legs attach. Be careful of making the chest too narrow on a frontal view. That will lead to a tendency of making the legs and feet splay out at the hooves. A narrow breast is usually seen in gated horses, such as saddlebreds, pasifinos, and Tennessee walkers. The Baroque horse's neck is thicker, arched, more pronounced and developed, and extends from the top of the withers, not the lower part of the shoulders. In evaluating the horse's neck, take into consideration how long or short it is. It should be proportional to the body. A neck of ideal length is about one third of the horse's length, measured from the pole to the withers, with the length comparable to the length of the legs. The line of the neck flows through the back through the withers, making for a good appearance and an efficient lever for maneuvering when being ridden. The strength of the neck with proportional development of all muscles improves the swing of the shoulder, elevates the shoulder and the body, and aids the horse in engaging its hindquarters through activation in the back, thus being able to correctly draw the neck, 
shoulder, and withers area is critical in making a horse look like this distinct Baroque breed. Unlike other breeds, often have a large crest that is well muscled. Regardless of the breed, the hindquarters should appear square when viewed from the side. However, the extent at which the upper corners are filled depends on the breed. The croup is from the lumbosacral joint to the tail. The hip refers to the line running from the ilium, the point in the hip, to the acicrum, the point in the buttock of the pelvis. The point is made by the sacrum and the lumbar vertebrae. The line following is referred to as the croup. While these two are linked in terms of length and musculature, the angle of the hip and the croup do not necessarily correlate. The flatter and more level the croup, the more likely that the horse will move with vertical action and less horizontal action. This is often seen in high-tailed breeds such as Rabians. The horse with the steep croup will move with its legs more collected underneath the body, which is desirable for Baroque breeds. The correct horse is a balanced, athletic animal, muscled uniformly throughout with long, clean, well-defined muscling preferred. Horses visually appraised as heavily muscled have greater circumference in the forearm and gaskin and are wider from stifle to stifle than lightly muscled or lightly framed horses. The Frisian is considered a medium bone or medium bust breed. Light framed or fine bone refers to the construction of the long bones noticed in the area of the cannon and pasture where they are slight and relative to the size and the mass of the horse. When drawing muscling on Baroque breeds, it's important to note that these are not slight or lightly muscled horses that are bred for racing, such as Arabians, Thoroughbreds, or the El Kateki. The withers themselves are higher than the croup, with the hindquarters positioned more underneath the body, which enhances the athletic ability of the horse. The ideal withers should be sharp, prominent, and well-defined. Most Baroque breeds tend to have more knee action. Pay attention to the knee not only moves up, but forwards as well. This allows for the ability to lengthen the frame throughout movement. Baroque breeds have a tendency to have more extravagant front legs and less active hind legs. Make sure that the legs are straight. How are the feet? Are the hooves landing flat when traveling in stride? Please be aware of drawing horses that are standing on the tips of their hooves or magically floating inches above the ground. Hooves should be flat on the ground when bearing weight, well balanced underneath the horse with a straight leg. You will need to make sure your horse's front and hind end match. If the front legs have more knee action, ideally you would like to see more articulated hocks in the rear accordingly. On the subject of movement with the legs, from a frontal perspective, many Spanish breeds tend to paddle with their front legs, especially in the trot. Paddling is when the arc of the foot doesn't necessarily swing straight forward, but rather widen to the outside before landing straight in front of the horse. It's important to be sure that both front legs rotate at the same ratio or the horse can look uneven, especially in the extended trot. If you are looking at a horse that paddles, pay attention to how much torque is being put on the knee and the fetlock as the horse travels. Too much torque can make your horse look unbalanced. Most horses paddle to some degree, so if you notice your reference picture and take note, but don't freak out over it. If you're drawing a frontal view and it doesn't quite look right, try adding a little bit of paddling to make the stride look more natural. Now the mane and tail on these breeds are very rich and full with these tails set low. This feature adds to the rich and regal appearance of the breed. 
They are often freighted to add to day-to-day -day maintenance, which often adds volume but adds layers of waviness to that mane and tail. In addition to the mane and tail, the Frisian breed has a long fur called feathers adorning its lower legs covering its hooves. When drawing these features, be mindful of the motion of your horse and follow suit. Manes move backward in a forward stride. Feathers on the feet will move up as the hoof comes down. Longer hair and fur will always move opposite of the anatomical area it is attached to. When a horse's head is measured from pole to horizontal line between its eyes, this distance is approximately one half of the distance from the horizontal line to the midpoint of the nostril. Thus, the eyes should be positioned one third of the distance from the horse's pole to the muzzle. When the width of the horse's head across the orbit of the skull is measured, that distance should almost be identical to the distance from the pole to the horizontal line drawn between the eyes. The Baroque horse's head should always be proportional with the face featuring very distinctive and usually a more convex or Roman profile. This trait lightly plays roles in warming the air as it's inhaled, but also may influence aerobic capacity. Roman noses are not considered a deformity. Eyes should be large and expressive. The lower jaw should be strong and clearly defined. The space between the two sides of the jawbone should be wide, with room for the larynx and muscle attachments. A large jaw gives the head a false appearance of being short and adds weight to the head. Too large of a jaw can cause the reduction of the horse's ability to flex at the pole and bring its head and neck into proper position for collection and health balance. Teeth and lips should rest easily together without protrusions on all breeds of horse. Ears should be proportional to the head. They should be set just below the level of the pole at the top of the head. Ears should be in a position where they can be rotated forward and backwards. Ears that are too large or too small may make the head seem too large in proportion with the rest of the body. Frisians are noted for having smaller ears than other breeds in proportion to their head size with tips turning toward the pole. 